this building in Marina del Rey, California, housed ICANN's very first offices. From here, the organization grew dramatically. Its headquarters are now just a few miles from here, but it also has offices scattered around the world. ICANN's growth since its formation in 1998 is the story of an international multi-stakeholder organization like few others. And it is that story that ICANN's history project is aimed at capturing. We're taking a very journalistic approach, interviewing some of the key players involved in ICANN's past. And so eventually, with a great deal of effort, a funding model was developed. But at the beginning, the government offered no resources for this organization at all. It was a zero-cost procurement contract from NTIA to ICANN to run the IANA function. After ICANN was formed and I was out of it, I left the White House. And then you had the, the Bush White House. I think you had a number of people there that were more traditional in their view of government control of things. And so I think ICANN did have a lot of difficulty trying to keep itself alive. And it was at the Sydney meeting 2009 where we had the session with the Department of Commerce and said, look, we're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to sit in this master-servant relationship. And so the brilliance of the affirmation of commitments was that all that stopped. We're supplementing those interviews with important pictures, documents, and videos. As new material comes in, it will be added, which means ICANN's history project is in essence living, constantly expanding and changing. Where we are not taking a typical journalistic approach is we're not doing any sort of overview or narrative. We don't want to form any opinions or make subjective decisions regarding the material we're posting. We'd prefer you draw your own conclusions. Finally, you'll note that we are exploring ICANN's history through pursuing various tracks or themes, such as our first one, ICANN's historical relationship with the U.S. government. ICANN is a funny, peculiar, um, odd duck in the, in the spectrum. Um, uh, it is serving a global purpose, uh, serving the entire world, um, and yet it is a non-governmental organization. How would you characterize the historical relationship between the government, the U.S. government, and ICANN? I always found it to be a problematic relationship and not a very supportive one. Between that announcement in March of 2014 and when the stewardship transition actually took place in 2016, did you ever think this is not going to happen? No. Was there ever any point where you thought this is not going to happen? Uh, yeah, pretty much every day. Either every government was going to sit, insist to sit, next to the U.S. government in an equal way at the table to quote-unquote manage our affairs and govern ICANN, or, which is the solution we went for, none of them would be in a control position, but rather in a co-equal position where they're advising and participating along with the private sector and the civic sector. But there was nothing in between. It's our hope this material will afford you some interesting insights into ICANN's past.